Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. First of all, I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the women out there. So there is a message that was sent to me via Facebook and one of our admins had to translate that message that I'm going to share with you. The message reads like this. Hello, Brother Nashi, can you please post for me as hidden identity? Can you please put my story into handwriting while you are listening to my audio? Like I told you the last time, I was dating a married man unknowingly and I did not know that he had children already. This man would prefer to leave his family without food and he would make sure that I was living a good life without lacking anything. We had met on Facebook, and by that time, I was working in Johannesburg. What pains me the most is that I had a very good job. This man was doing deliveries from Cape Town to Johannesburg. So after this, we met after communicating on Facebook. By that time, for me to date, it wasn't easy because of the job that I was doing. But after meeting up with this man, we had intercourse and clearly saw that I was just a fool because quickly I then fell pregnant for him. He always visited me and my boss will give us a room to sleep because they thought that he was truly a good man and he had told me that his wife had passed on. Sometimes when he would speak about his late wife, he would start to cry and I'll feel sorry for him because he will be explaining to me saying that his late wife was so heartless. She had done terrible things to him. She had lied about the paternity of the kids and he had thought that all of his kids were his but they were not his kids. Sometimes he would ask me to pray before we slept. Then you will start to praise the Lord saying that, Jesus, I want to thank you that finally you have given me a very good wife who is even prepared to give me a child. Little did I know that he had three kids at home and a wife whom he was residing with in Cape Town. After this, he said that I must stop working and me and him, we started staying together and he was paying all of my rentals. Things then went the other way and life wasn't easy for me anymore. And he said that if you truly love me, you are going to follow me to Cape Town. I had no choice. I just agreed. Upon my arrival in Cape Town, I thought that life had changed and I thought that God had finally blessed me with a man who loved me. But one day I was coming from the clinic because I was pregnant at that time. I then saw that there were women who were busy fighting with my husband and that is the day that I found out that he was a married man. Brother Nashi, I suffered so much the time that I was staying in Cape Town. I didn't know anyone so there was a time when I went to this prophet, these white garment prophets and he said that he would help me but first I had to sleep with him so that he can buy me a bag of milly meal and a chicken. I then sold all of my property so that I can just pay my rentals. I sold my TV. I was only left with pots, plates and a hot stove. The lady which I was doing a small business with then introduced me to another white garment prophet who told me that he was going to give me a love portion. He told me that it was just a prayer so that your husband can come back to you. Because of my pregnancy was growing and I did not have any plan at that time, I wanted this man to come back to me so that he can take care of me and the baby. Then this white garment prophet gave me something that looked like ground nuts or peanuts and he said that I must eat it only when I had gotten home without eating anything. So the next morning I woke up and I went to the shops. Then I bought a bottle of Coke and I mixed that Coke with those peanuts that had been given to me. Then I drank. The prophet he told me that I was going to have a running stomach after taking this charm. And he told me that if this happens, what I was supposed to do is that after I had finished to wipe myself with a tissue, after wiping myself with a tissue, I was then supposed to bath my buttocks with water. That water, I wasn't supposed to throw it away. I was supposed to leave it in a bucket. 
then use this water to cook food for this man who had impregnated me and also I was supposed to give him this water to drink. He came back to ask for forgiveness but sometimes I would feel pity for him even though he had made me to suffer. I was not supposed to give him this love potion. Brother Nashi, it was only once when I gave him this food that he had a love potion. But then, after having a fight with me, he started to assault me. He beat me up and he didn't even care if I was pregnant or not. I then noticed that I started to bleed. Then he took me to a private hospital. I saw him signing some papers and I didn't even know what the papers were for. I was only told that they wanted to abort my child. My brother, abortion is so painful especially when you did it without any agreement. I was told that they had to do the abortion because my child had died in the womb. What hurt me the most is that I later then discovered that the place where he had taken me for this abortion, it was just an illegal private clinic that dealt in illegal abortions. Anonymous crying. After this, Nashi, I then recovered. Then I started to cook his food using that charm again. I went to visit again this other spiritualist, but this time around, the spiritualist who helped me, she was a South African. I was told that I had to come back with 500 rands, and that 500 rands, my husband was the one who was supposed to give me that money. I went back to that spiritualist with all the things that she had ordered me to bring. So I went there with the 500 rands that he had personally given to me and the pubic hair. When I gave her these things, she took the money and the pubic hair. She bent the pubic hair. Then she gave me the ashes. She told me that whenever he was around, when I had finished cooking his food, I shall take the ashes of his pubic hair, then season his food and give him the food to eat. I did as I was told, but then I started to notice that whenever me and this man would have an argument, he would threaten me, he would take out a knife and he would threaten to cut himself, I mean to slit his own throat. There was a time if I wasn't quick enough to push him away, he wanted to throw himself in front of an oncoming taxi, but I stopped him from doing this. When I saw that he was always threatening to kill himself and trying to jump in front of oncoming vehicles, and it seems as if he was beginning to go mad, I then ran away from Cape Town. When I ran away from Cape Town, then I received a text message saying that when I left Cape Town, he had drank red poison and died. Now when I look back, sometimes I think about what happened between me and this man. I honestly and I truly loved this man. What hurts me the most is that he lied to me saying that he had no kids. His wife had died a long time ago. At least if he had told me the truth that in Cape Town he had kids and he had a wife there. But he chose to lie to me and I fell in love with him. And by me falling in love with him, he then ruined my life. That is my own story, my brother Nashi. Guys, uh, that was a story that I received as a WhatsApp voice note. Then it had to be translated. There was a point in time as she was recording a voice note, she began to cry. But I just told her to finish a story so that the whole world can listen to her confession. Please let us talk about this issue in the comment section.